the Indiana Hoosiers. And Mr. Allen, last year was not a good year for him. I will say that. Tom Allen went 2-10 and 10 last year with the Hoosiers. Postgame win expectancy did say that they should have been closer to 3-9, and nine, but this team lost every Big Ten game. Um, your returning production doesn't point to anything great coming back. Yet you're number 87 in the country as far as returning production, 57%. You lose the linebacker, McFadden. He he was an absolute stud. You lose uh, Peyton Hendershot. You lose the running back, Stephen Carr. Um, let the, I mean, you see all this red on here. I mean, it is just, this team was so bad last year. Number 126 in PPA per drive on offense. Um, let's start off with the offense. Let's do that. New offense coordinator is Walt Bell. Former Florida State offensive coordinator. Former UMass head coach. How does this guy continue to get jobs? Like, I just do not understand it. He he wasn't good as the OC at Florida State. He wasn't good as the head coach at UMass. Like, he must be one hell of a networker. Like, absolutely. Uh, Missouri transfer Connor Bazelak comes in. He looks like he's going to be the starter quarterback. You do have the running back, Sean Shivers, coming in from Auburn. Like, he's going to allow you to do a lot of really fun stuff and whatnot. I think he's going to start at running back. You got 2021 Florida State transfer DJ Matthews that transferred in last year, but went out after I think only four games. So you didn't even really get him. Offense was just bad across the board. I mean, they were number 124 in overall success rate. The offensive line returns three starters from a not good unit. I mean, there's just there's not a lot to look at and be hopeful for here. Uh, moving over to the defense, like this is normally where Tom Allen would would be able to stand and say, this is the identity of our team. And last year was not it at all. Minnesota defensive line coach Chad Wilt is the new defense coordinator, but uh, Allen has said that he's going to be more hands-on with the defense this year. He's going to be more involved with planning, etc. So I guess maybe that's good. They brought in seven transfers on defense, four of them at linebacker, where the only guy returning that had any meaningful game action is Cam Jones, Defensive line is going to lean on the defensive end, Brian, and the defensive tackle, Elliott, here. They were number 118 in points per scoring opportunity and number 126 in takeaways. You've got to find a way to get some stops this year. Like, the secondary looks strong, but they only had five interceptions last year. So there's no ball hawking going on. Like, this is, whew, it was just a rough, rough year. This team is a projected favorite in three games. This year, you got six toss-ups, so at least that's promising. Um, the toss-ups, of course, any game that is projected to be within one score, but I do not see it. I'm just, I am having a really difficult time uh, looking at keys to the season. Like, it's not easy to find anything to hang your hat on with this team. Like, the two coordinators that were really successful, that really led to good seasons for Indiana, they're now both fairly successful head coaches, like Kalen DeBoer and Kane Womack. Uh, can Basilak rekindle some of the magic that he had at Missouri? This is another key here. Uh, he had he had magic at Missouri in 2020. Not so much last year, but he he was injured for the majority of last year. Uh, Shivers coming in from Auburn, that's a huge get. That's going to let them get at least somewhat creative with their scheme on offense. Um, and then, my gosh, if everybody thought the schedule was hard in 2021, like it ain't any easier this year. Weeks 4 through 7 and weeks 10 through 13 are just brutal. 4 through 7, by the way. Uh, at Cincinnati, at Nebraska, Michigan, Maryland. Like, imagine having to deal with that Maryland offense after three straight weeks of at Cincy, at Nebraska, and Michigan. I mean, <laughs> it's just brutal. And then, of course, you get a bye week over the, the Halloween weekend, and you get Penn State, at Ohio State, at Michigan State, and then Purdue. Like, you got to deal with the offensive juggernaut after dealing with, with those three? I mean, goodness gracious. I've uh I've got Indiana at three and nine. I just I am I wish good things for these teams like Rutgers and Indiana, but I just don't see it. And maybe you can look at it differently and help me out. Like maybe you can tell me what I'm missing here. Uh, if you are a fan of this team or whatever, jump into the comments. I would love to know what you think because it don't look good for Indiana or Rutgers this year. Like this is. This is going to be a brutal year. 
It absolutely is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.